We're back with another leather project. And you know what I love about these is it's combining those familiar techniques of stringing with something new. Absolutely, yeah, it's really another component to add to your stringing. Right, take it to another level. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these bracelets are beautiful, and I love the way that you can combine different colors together, too. And you really can use any bead, and we'll talk about that when we get into the project, and okay. how you can alter this to, sure. to use other beads. Sounds good. So where do we begin? So once again, we're taking some leather that we're going to alter in order to um, turn it into this um, rippled form. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take um, leather hole punch pliers, and we're going to use the smallest hole punch, which is a two millimeter on this one. And Depending on whether you punch it from the back or the front of the leather, you're going to have different size holes because the um, punch is tapered. So the um, holes at the very end we want to be a little larger because they're going to accommodate the head of our rivet, our cap rivet that we're going to use. Okay. So I'm going to punch um, one hole at the end from the top, again, because I want the hole to be as large as it can. So as it tapers up, it makes the hole larger versus the hole being smaller underneath. And then, luckily, we need 20 millimeters worth of space between the two holes, and the leather we're using is 10 millimeters, so I like to use my materials to measure when I can. Let's make things it's a little convenient. faster. Yeah. It is, yeah, especially for this project. So now we have our two end holes. And then from here, we want 14 holes that are 10 millimeters apart, but I want the holes to be a little smaller on the top so we don't see them in our bracelet. So I'm going to turn that over and just mark 10 millimeters with my leather again. Take my hole punch plier and punch. Super easy. It is. And what I do, I like to make these in multiples because after I punch all my holes in one, I can just hold it up to the one, another piece of leather and quickly. Oh, sure. Use it as a template. Yeah, right? exactly. Use it as a template. And so then after I punch all my holes, we're going to do two more at the other end, just like we did on the front, larger ones that are 20 millimeters apart. They can even be a little farther apart because that's going to be the loop for our clasp. So the larger it is, the easier it is for, for oh, you. Oh, right. Okay. So that's where you'll fasten the hook through it. Exactly. Sometimes I won't do the last hole until I'm all the way done because I can adjust the size by um, how long I make that Okay. And about cap. how long of a piece of leather to start with? About 12 inches. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to take this and put it in the water to um, get it um, really supple. So I have one already in here. And it's really important that we do this step because the leather's pretty, um, you can see how it, you know, it's difficult to bend on its own. But once we get it wet, it really just becomes a supple piece of right. material, like a ribbon almost. Definitely. And is there a polishing that you need to do when it's wet? Um, not when it's wet, but at the very end when oh, it's okay. dry. We definitely, I'll show you a way to get that color to pop back okay. up by using a polish. And so um, the first thing we'll do is we'll take um, a piece of beading wire and we've um, pre-crimped uh, about four millimeter loop on the end of it. And then I'm going to bend over my, um, do it on this side, bend over the um, end so that the holes line up, slide in our clasp, then we'll take what's um, called a cap or a compression rivet, which are great for using um, with leather and metal. Definitely. We'll slide our wire over that cap rivet, put it through the hole and then put our cap on here. And you'll notice that the cap fits just perfectly in that hole, and that's really important for compression rivets, that that cap goes into that hole and doesn't just set on top of the hole. Okay. Then we'll put it on a little steel block, and this is a setting tool for um, cap rivets. And we'll put that over there. And um, I like to use a rawhide, a weighted rawhide mallet when I'm setting um, leather um, findings because we don't need as much pressure as we do when we work with metal and it'll help save the life of the tool over time. So we give it a couple good whacks and that's going to set that compression rivet now so this wire is um, permanently Yeah, in that here. was a good idea to put it over the post. Yeah, it just hides it anyway. Yeah, perfect. So. Now we're going to load our beads 
And um, you'll notice I've preloaded beads on a wire, not to stay on this wire, but mostly just to look at the color and um, the variation in faceted versus non-faceted to make sure I like how it lays out before I start stringing it in here because we don't want to overwork our leather. We want to do this once. So we'll, you'll work it out the first time. And it looks like you have alternating sizes of beads. Is that important? It is really important. Um, the smaller beads, the six millimeter rounds, will be on the inside of the bracelet. You can see that here that helps um, with the large beads on the outside helps the whole bracelet self shape into um, an oval oh, right. for a bracelet so it'll yeah, wear so really it's pulling nice. that inside surface closer to Ex the wrist exactly exactly so we're going to turn that over and start um, putting our beads on the first one will be this guy here and it's important to um, tuck that tail into the bead so you want to make sure the um, bead you picked has a hole large enough to accommodate that tail and then um, we'll feed the wire through the hole. All right. Now we're at the surface of the leather, so we know our big beads are there. So we're gonna put our big bead on and go back down. Now we're at the back of the leather again. Another six millimeter bead. And this is at this point, after I do three beads, is when I tighten everything up because I can kind of pull this bead um, down and I get this so nice you start ripple. to see the ripple. Exactly. Even, early, even this early in the process. Yeah, very early. Every time you um, go back down after a big one, you'll be able to see it. And so I would continue on now and put a big and a small, and I'd pull it after that small until okay. it gets really nice and tight. Then, once all of your beads are loaded on, we are going to have it ended um, right before our two big holes that are going to be turned into our... Um, loop. I'm going to put a crimp bead on this wire. We'll just take a look at how I would crimp this. Um, when I feed this back through, I'll put it here so you can see a little better, I'm going to feed it back through that bead, just like we fed the first bead over the tail. Right, we, so you need this little, the same piece to feed over the post? Exactly, okay. we need a loop, but we also wanna make sure that tail goes through the bead so that when we trim it, it, we're not trimming it right up against the crimp bead. So it's nice to have it go through there. And then just wanna make sure that lines up so that loop and the hole will line up. Once you know your size of your um, loop is good, we're gonna go ahead and crimp that using the crimp pliers by first putting it in the back channel of the crimp pliers. And what that does is that creates a C. Then we're gonna turn the C on its side and put that in the front channel, and that's gonna close that C. Makes it nice and round. And makes it round. When I'm in a situation like this where I'm really not gonna see the crimp, I also like to take the very tips of those pliers and just squeeze, squeeze it. it. Yeah, just you to make cheater. sure. I know, I don't, want, <laughs> I don't want it to fall apart. You've done so much work. That's right. And so now we are going to, um, just like we did on the first side, we're going to put this peg through. We're going to go through that wire loop okay. we made, back up to the surface, and again our compression rivet here through this hole. And this is going to be our loop that um, will connect this. And so we'll take this back to our um, steel block and set that compression rivet. And then I trim my wire. I always trim my wire last, because if I make a mistake, I'm an expert at getting crimps you can cut go, out. You can fix it, <laughs> I right? can fix it, yeah. I've done that a few Great. times. Me too. So, um, and then these clasps, you can open and close up to, you know, what's a comfortable way. Right, so then you have your fastener. That looks great. And then once it's done, especially once you've wet leather, I really like to go back in with saddle soap. And um, it's a cleaner and a conditioner. And um, really my favorite way is I'll have these little white cotton gloves. And I'll go in here and just polish up that leather. And you can see the color really comes back out. It gets really shiny because it'll get a little dull from having been wet. It also seals it up a little bit too for, for long-term wear. Absolutely, and this is something you'll want to do once in a while after you wear your bracelets to just keep um, your leather really nice. Um, it, it works on all types of leather, not great on suede, but just about every other leather um, cord really will just renew it and make it supple and last a long, long time. And like you said, become an air heirloom piece of jewelry for the right. future. Yeah, those are so pretty. Well, let's take a look at your finished pieces one more time. These are beautiful color palettes that you chose too. 
Thank you so much, Melissa. This is a wonderful project, and I love the idea of taking our stringing to the next level.